Hello, luminous beings. Joya with Vibology here. I look super funky because it is 5.30 in the morning and I don't care <laughs> what I want to share. Um, wants to come out right now and spirit was like, record this now. So I'm like, oh my God. So here I am. Um, and that's okay because, you know, I profess authenticity. So you get to see me in my pajamas. Um, if you're watching, if you're listening to my podcast, this episode is going to be about uh, sacred union and the integration of your divine feminine, feminine and divine masculine energies within you and how when you do that work within you, your relationships outside of you automatically change. I'm witnessing this happen right now in my life and it's blowing me away. So that's part of why I want to share this and I have some notes here. So on my phone that I've written down in my notes. So I'll be referring to that a little bit, but it begins here back in September when I went to Scotland. I wasn't planning on going to Scotland. The year before I said, yes, I put a deposit down, but then I decided to not go to Scotland because I was going to go to Spain for a sound healing training which I wound up not going to because I needed foot surgery. And then my foot surgery was canceled. So I wound up having all of this free time that I had not planned on having, which is very unusual for me. And on the Monday of two weeks before Scotland, my um, mentor friend, spiritual uh, mystery school teacher called me and she said, I saw you very clearly in a meditation in Scotland are you sure you can't go? I will arrange space for you. I'll call the hotel. I'll add you in. Like it's a lot of work to add somebody at the last minute to go to a retreat. Right. Um, but I told her I can't go. I was like, I can't go. We're going to Thailand. We've, you know, I've invested a lot already this year on travel. I can't put my funds toward um, more travel experiences. So the Monday before everyone was leaving, I was meditating and I heard a voice drop in and it said, prepare for Scotland. And so I opened my eyes and I said, well, if you want me to go, then you need to make a miracle because <laughs> it's Saturday and I, you know, it's Saturday and this was Monday. So lo and behold, Trista calls me on Thursday and she says, well, you're not going to believe it, but a person dropped out. She called and she said she can't go and she's donating her spot. To Can you go? And I said, let me talk to my husband about airfare. But yes, I think I can. So anyway, I went to Scotland. The energy of Scotland, what I experienced there was so much about the masculine energy. And the biggest realization that I had when I was there was I was bumping up energetically against one of the men. So she, there were men on this journey, which usually there aren't. And I started bumping up against one of the men who was on the journey, who was actually uh, one of the guides. He's young. Um, he's very smart, very wise, very practiced in what he does. And he doesn't have the maturity or the wisdom yet to listen. And so he would just talk over me. Um, I would ask him a question and he would just dismiss it. Like he, I felt like it was rude. Um, this was my perspective, of course. And so I'm like, what is this energy? Well, anyway, so the whole, throughout the whole journey, all of these unfoldings kept tapping around around the masculine, the masculine, the masculine. And I realized some very important things that broke my heart and I just sobbed. One was that I realized that I had this deep-seated belief that men don't matter, um, that they're just not that important in the world or when it comes to raising children or... Uh, like that they're like second class citizens compared to women. I really had this, this deep seated belief. And I realized and understood from an energetic level, how this belief had vibrationally affected my son and how it affects my marriage. And it broke my heart. I just sobbed, sobbed because this energetic transmission of course comes through, right? It's like, it's not something that was even conscious. It's not something I had to ever say. 
It just comes across in the energetic transmission of the very belief system that's wired within you because we are nothing but energetic transmitters. So I had this realization. I immediately uh, went to work to heal this with my son. So in the in the uh, inner energetics of this thing with this combating with this guy in the energetic combatment I was having with this guy I realized that I had this energy of being in competition with men and I'm like oh my god holy shit I have had this energy my whole life of feeling like I'm in competition with men and it, and it's always been this competition of wanting to be respected for my mind um, like put as an equal on this playing field, right? Because well, number one, the way I grew up was abused and um, used as a sex object, right? So then of course, in my young adult years and in my career that I chose, I worked in a very male dominated industry in the paper industry, paper and packaging, and then in printing, which uh, back then, maybe not so much now, I'm not in it anymore, but it was so male dominated, and so it was always this competition to be seen, to be heard as an intellectual equal and not as a sexual object. And so I had this energy come up with this guy and I was able to realize it. And I was like, whoa, what if I stop feeling like I'm in competition with him and I just relax and step into this vibration of listening and experiencing what he's here to teach us? And when I did that, the entire dynamic changed. So fast forward, my husband and I just have returned from Thailand. I've been doing the work since Scotland, right? Which was only in September, October to heal this divine masculine energy wound inside of me, not outside of me. This is an inside wound. This is inside healing. And I was like, well, how does the divine masculine show up inside of me? Uh, in a toxic way. So I've been doing this work inside of me <sighs> without telling my husband. I don't have to tell my husband what I'm experiencing and he's not even going to really understand it. He doesn't do this kind of work like I do. So I've been doing the work. Fast forward, we go to Thailand and he was nothing but sweet, thoughtful, kind, supportive, loving. We had such deep conversations um, that we've never had before. And on the day of the Aquarius change, I had asked him the night before, I said, you know, this is happening, this shift. And it was actually on our anniversary, by the way, our 13th wedding anniversary, around the same time we got married, ironically, 13 years ago. And so I said, this shift is happening. And I explained to him what it is. And I said, could we do a little ceremony? Because now we're at the end of our journey and it's just he and I together. He says, yes, let's do this. So we're doing the ceremony and it's like a, and it was just a super simple thing because, you know, I'm not going to overcomplicate it with him. And I said, let's write down what we're really releasing and letting go in this old paradigm of the world and the way that we've been living in the world, showing up in the world, what we want to release and what we want to create going forward, stepping into this new energy that's coming online within ourselves. And so he says, I want to be a more supportive partner of your vision. I want to be fully protecting and supporting what it is you want to create in the world. This is what he said to me. And I just broke down crying. This is the ultimate ultimate role of the divine masculine, right? So, but I've been doing that for myself inside. And so what I'm blown away at this morning, as I'm sitting here, meditating, writing, journaling, praying, doing the things I normally do is this realization that in order to get to what I'm bringing forward, what I'm creating in 2025, which is a really powerful sound healing program, training program, um, that's not like anything else out there, that I had to do this work inside of me first, because this was a very big disconnect that I had inside of myself, this very deep wound that needed to be healed. 
And as I've healed it, I feel this um, untangling, this unraveling of this toxic, dysfunctional, masculine energy in my DNA, in my father, in my grandfather, the sexual perpetrator that just has begun to unravel and open. And even though I don't talk to my father and nor will I, um, I feel like it's helping him to heal too, right? Because we're in this, we're quantumly entangled forever. And that as I've done, I had to do this work to bring forward the work that I'm to create in 2025. And so I wanted to talk about the divine masculine and divine feminine energy and what it actually means, what it is, and why you need to do this work too. And so let me pull up um, the roles, right? I had this this these things about sacred union and this was one of the things by the way that mary magdalene taught so as i'm walking the way of the magdalene path which is my path it's been my work my whole life to walk this path that this is a deep healing that's happening and that she and yeshua were equal partners again with this this competition feeling right of like she was erased from history she was wiped out of the history books as a spiritual equal to Yeshua. And that has always really pissed me off. And, and that sacred righteousness, that feeling of like being angry at men is being released as I'm doing this work. And it's, it's the Magdalene energy too, right? That it's like, she was teaching this. It was wiped out from history. So now we need to bring it back and talk about how important this is. And it's the yin and the yang. It's the polarities that exist in all things here on planet earth. And that polarity exists and lives within us. And our work is to unify and balance the two ends of the polarity and get to where I call it the and space, that middle space. And, and holds polarity. I see this and I see that. I see the left and I see the right. So I always call it the and space. And so this is what I wrote down that I wanted to talk about this morning. Sacred union represents the harmonious integration of divine feminine and masculine energies within ourselves and our relationships. These energies are complementary and mutually supportive, creating a balance that fosters growth, wholeness, and alignment. And so I was thinking about the yang qualities, the masculine energy. It's active, directive, structured, and it's the external. Taking decisive actions and steps forward, support, protection, structure, logic, focus, discipline, strength, clarity, leadership, provision, grounding, boundaries, confrontation, initiation. Initiation meetings, meaning to spark growth, change, or new beginnings, taking initiation. Those are the masculine qualities. And I'm going to give you a download on my website. So I know I'm going through these a little bit fast, but you're, you can go there and download these for yourself. So you can take your time with them and really read through them, look through them and see where these masculine qualities are being used in your life or not used in your life because we want to be able to utilize all of this power and discipline I know for me is the one that I'm really lacking um, practicing consistency and perseverance is what discipline is and so as I'm stepping into the healing of my divine, ma divine masculine I'm like where can I bring this in right more structure more discipline. I already use a lot of logic. I already use a lot of focus. So we want to think about bringing these qualities inside of ourselves, right? The feminine energy is the yin. It's the receptive, intuitive, flowing. It's the internal energy. And this energy is waiting, nurturing, flow, intuition, compassion, creativity, receptivity, softness, emotion, healing, presence, surrender, expansion, mystery, and collaboration. And so where are these 
um, being demonstrated in your life and how do they support each other? So action, action, <laughs> I just made up a word, action, which is masculine and waiting, which is feminine, means progress balanced with patience, support plus nurturing, strength balanced with care, protection and flow, safety balanced with adaptability structure and creativity, order balanced with innovation, logic and intuition, reason balanced with inner knowing, focus and presence is determination balanced with your awareness, discipline and surrender, consistency balanced with trust, clarity and emotion, direction with depth, boundaries and collaboration, independence balanced with connection, initiation and expansion, beginnings balanced with growth. So when we put these into practice, the masculine, inner, we create a harmonizing effect inside of ourselves. So we come into coherence inside of us. We come into harmony inside of us. And this harmony, when you come into this harmony, the masculine energy provides us with grounded direction, grounded direction so that we feel safe to flow, create, and express ourselves. And the feminine energy offers nourishment and inspiration, which gives the masculine energy purpose and a connection to a greater whole, which the masculine energy needs purpose and connection to a greater whole, right? So it's not destructive. And this interplay that between the two forms the foundation of sacred union, which allows individuals to embody their fullest potential in balance and harmony. Now, this just, is just so beautiful. The sacred union inside creates this inner balance and the masculine energy inside of us gives us the structure, the discipline, the focus, the boundaries, and it acts as a grounding force that helps us bring our ideas into tangible manifestation and the feminine energy gives us the inspiration and the creativity to fuel the masculine action. It offers intuitive guidance to navigate life with wisdom. And it creates emotional depth to connect with the soul's purpose. And it acts as an expansive force that dreams, explores, and flows with life's rhythms. It's so beautiful. So when we put these all together, we create inner harmony. I was like asking myself, you know, what has this done? And it's created this inner harmonic inside of me where I feel grounded. I feel inspired. I feel a structure. I feel a focus. And at the same time, I feel free and flowing. Um, I have self-sovereignty. It creates self-sovereignty by cultivating both energies. You rely less on external validation. <laughs> or competition, and you don't need anything outside of you to make you feel complete. You become your own protector and your own nurturer, leading to true empowerment. Manifestation powers. Woo. When masculine action is infused with our feminine creativity, your ability to bring your ideas and dreams into your rea reality is exponentially greater because the focus, right? The focus, the discipline to take focus and disciplined action in alignment with a vision, in alignment with our intuition, in alignment with our expansion and our creativity is going to bring everything way faster into alignment because we are in a harmonic alignment. And the more energetically uh, cohesive we are, the faster we manifest, the faster we bring things into fruition, healing and integration imbalances in these energies stem from our past wounds. Our overactive masculine energy is rigid, controlling, disconnected from emotions, and rather than disciplined, it's hedonistic. Overactive feminine is chaotic, overly emotional, passive, martyrdom, those kinds of things. The inner union helps heal these extremes, creating a flow between the two. So I'm, you know, in my sound healing training, this is a part of the work because I, the most important instrument for a sound healer is the sound healer. You can just 
be a sound healer and stand there with your energy and use your voice and a drum. That's all you need because you're not transmitting going to sound the path as a sound healing teacher of the sound current wanting to, to transmit through you your energy, or wanting to transmit your, your intention. Where you the people who have, are there, you just want to be a conduit for this. What they receive healing from you is light none and love energy, the love and business, wisdom, which is, by the way, the masculine and the feminine energy union. That's the ultimate of what it is. Love is the masculine action, and um, wisdom is the feminine. So we put these together, the love and the wisdom, to flow down through you, in you, as you, as a sound healer, that you're transmitting this frequency to the people who are receiving it. For the healing benefit of whatever they need and whatever that is is none of your business <laughs> it's really that simple and so as we do this work i feel like you know one of the things that i can share with you that's the most important thing for you to do is your own inner dialogue work invite your inner masculine to hold space to be protective to be the support for your divine feminine energy your creativity your flow your intuition Invite your divine masculine to have the courage to express your boundaries for yourself. Boundaries aren't for other people. You don't run around going, this is my boundary. Don't cross it. No one cares. This is about you knowing what your boundary is inside of you, that you don't cross it. You don't cross your own boundaries. And therefore you don't allow other people to cross your own boundaries. And you don't even need to say it because it's energetic. We're going back to the energetics again, right? Everything is vibrational. Everything is frequency. You don't need to say it. It's like if you're funny, you don't need to tell people you're funny. If you're beautiful, you don't need to tell people you're beautiful. If you're smart, you don't need to tell people you're smart. The same thing applies here, right? So it's, it's your own energetics that's being transmitted on a constant basis, which is why it's important to do the inner work to heal because you're transmitting this frequency out, whether you know it or not. When you cultivate this balance, this is how you step into your fullest potential. Sacred union inside of yourself is the foundation for experiencing harmony in your outer relationships, work, and your spiritual path. I'm going to say that again. Sacred union inside of yourself is the foundation for experiencing harmony in your outer relationships, your work, and your spiritual path. It's the journey of becoming your own sacred partner, embodying wholeness, and living a life of divine alignment. I'm witnessing this happen on the external realm as I've done the work inside of me to heal this aspect of myself. And as I've healed this aspect of myself, I'm witnessing this incredible healing of my marriage this incredible healing of my son um, by healing my own energy inside of me. It's, as I get emotional here, it's very humbling, this grace. And I get this feeling of grace again descend upon me that I experienced in Bali, and I think I shared it already. But if you didn't listen to that, it was a, I went to a sound bath that was done by a man. <laughs> As I'm thinking about this, the sound bath done by this man named Sky. And I spoke with him for a little bit. He was lovely. It was a powerful sound bath. And it was a very masculine sound bath because he used drums and didgeridoo, gongs, Tibetan bulls, all very masculine instruments. And the next morning I woke up sobbing, experiencing this profound feeling of grace. And I call it the grief of grace. And I finally experienced what grace is. My For so many years, I wondered what grace was. I was like, what does that mean? And it was really this feeling that overcame my heart of acceptance, forgiveness, clear seeing, of, you know, it's repentance because it's really this clear seeing of all of the ways that you've made these tremendous errors that have really hurt yourself and really hurt other people. 
and the feeling of grace descended upon me. And it was like this, uh, it, it was a relief from the pressure of the guilt. It was a release of the pressure of the shame. It was a release of the pressure of self-judgment. And it was an invitation instead into humility, into forgiveness, into acceptance, into love, into kindness, into compassion, um, because we really don't know what we don't know, right? And so this feeling of grace descends upon me again and again and again now as I go through this process. And with this healing of the, of the divine masculine and the divine feminine inside of me, coming into sacred union inside of me, I'm watching it do the vibrational and energetic work of healing the men around me externally. And I know it's not me doing it. And that's the work, right? That's the work of a sound healer. That's the work of the Magdalene path that we come into this full conscious awareness of ourselves as divine transmitters of the highest frequencies of love and wisdom that come through us, in us, as us. And this is what Yeshua meant and Mary Magdalene meant when they said, it is not I, but the source who does all things through me. It's why I love stepping into experiences of the flow state, which I step into flow probably every day through chanting, through drumming, when I do a sound bath, through painting, through dancing. So I have a lot of ways that I step into flow. And to be into flow means to come into that razor thin edge of presence where you are here right now. You're not thinking about anything, but rather you're just in this channeled consciousness flowing through you and you're in action. You're moving, you're doing. And that's the other interesting thing about flow is that it doesn't happen in meditation. Meditation is passive. Being in flow is active. And so it's it's kind of an active meditation because you're moving and you're doing and you're creating. And the creator creates. The creator constantly creates. And we are the creator because we are created in the image and likeness of the creator. We are source embodied as each and every one of us. And the source created polarity. The very polarity of source is source wanting to know who source is by creating experiences to experience itself. <laughs> and that immediately creates polarity, right? You're not in you're not in the wholeness of you anymore. Now you are you are in the experience of your own self. And so for us as source, that work is to come into that divine union of that yin and the yang, the polarity within that exists. And this is not just for women to do, this is for men to do too, right? So now men who might be listening to this is to work on the healing, the toxic masculinity inside of you, healing the toxic femininity inside of you. And when you do that, as you do that healing work within yourself, you change the relationship dynamics externally. I don't create combative situations in my marriage anymore because I'm not in competition with my husband. I don't create combative situations with my son. Not that I did because we get along super well. We're very, um, we're exact, he's like a mini me. <laughs> we get along really well. Um, but I did transmit a frequency to him that he was less important than his older sibling who was born female. It wasn't conscious. It wasn't conscious. That's the thing. It was energetic. And so this is a huge component of the spiritual journey that does get talked about, but I feel like it's misunderstood. I know I misunderstood it for a long time. Because I always thought sacred union, healing the divine masculine, divine feminine, happened externally. Not really realizing the depth and the meaning of what it means to do that work internally. And that the external world really does reflect the internal world. And I'm experiencing this birth right now, this birthing of a whole new relationship dynamic with my husband. 
a whole new relationship dynamic with my son, a whole new relationship dynamic with every man probably that I ever encounter everywhere because I no longer feel like I'm in competition with them. I no longer feel like I care if they look at me as a sexual object or not. It's none of my business. I'm whole within myself. And that's where the work is. It's always in here. I want to end this talk by just saying how the divine masculine as love shows up and how the divine feminine as wisdom shows up and manifests within our own life, which then shows up externally in our outside life. So this is what I've written down. Masculine as love. The masculine energy embodies active, giving, and protective love. A love that takes action. It expresses itself outwardly through acts of care, service, and providing. It creates safety by establishing boundaries and structure to hold space for growth and vulnerability. It offers strength that grounds and anchors the connection between ourself and others. And it sacrifices itself for the greater good. Masculine love often shows up as devotion, purpose, and steadfastness. It's the kind of love that holds space for creation and supports others in their unfolding. Much like a strong and steady riverbank, allowing water, the feminine, to flow freely within it. Feminine as wisdom. The feminine energy embodies intuition, nurturing, and flowing wisdom that listens deeply it tunes into the inner and unseen realms, connecting intuition and the subconscious. It holds for mystery. Feminine wisdom trusts the unknown and moves with the cycles of life in a very rhythmic way. It offers creativity by birthing ideas, solutions, and experiences through inspiration and imagination, and it guides us through our feeling. Feminine wisdom uses emotions and empathy as tools to navigate life. This wisdom isn't about logic or linear thinking. It's about flowing with life's rhythms and embracing the fullness of what is, trusting that all experiences have their place. Love and wisdom together create the sacred union. When we unite these inside of us, we create compassion in action we create grounded intuition, we create inner harmony, and we manifest the sacred. <laughs> and I can see how at the higher planes and the higher levels, my feminine was working uh, over time. My intuition, high and spot on. My ideas, my creativity, high and super spot on. But my focus and my discipline to decide, masculine energy, right? To decide and to choose what to bring forward in action wasn't there. Let's give some examples of what it looks like when we manifest this love and wisdom inside of ourselves. When we step into this frequency of wholeness of sacred union inside of the self. In decision-making, it's our masculine love, taking decisive action based on what's best for you and others. Feminine wisdom is trusting intuition and subtle guidance to know the right path. So what does that look like inside of you when you're healed and you're healthy? It's to trust in the flow of life. It's to trust in the invisible of life. It's to trust that as you, you as a divine being, you being in alignment with source, that as you stay present, because life is only unfolding in the present moment, that as you stay present and you don't bring forward the energetics from your past, that the, the path unfolds before you and the divine masculine inside of you knows that you have the strength, you have the courage, you have the discipline, you have the boundaries set up, you have the structure to walk the path because you trust yourself. So I hope you see how this weaves and works. It's really profoundly powerful. And I'm only beginning. I'm only beginning to understand it. I'm only beginning to understand it. I'm only beginning to watch it do this profound healing work 
outside of me in my own marriage and inside of me in how I feel about what I'm capable of creating and doing and the level of self-trust that I'm cultivating inside of me to bring forward this big vision that I've always had in my life for myself as a divine being, right? We all have these big visions locked away inside of us. And this is just one aspect. This is just one part of the Magdalene path. It's just one part of it. And to be experiencing this externally with my husband, I can tell you right now is nothing short of a freaking miracle. And it blows me away. It wasn't five, six years ago that I told him that when I was starting to have a spiritual awakening, I remember we were sitting on our patio on the back porch and I said to him, I feel like I'm having a spiritual awakening and I'm becoming spiritual. And I remember he looked at me and he said, if you turn into a Jesus freak, I will divorce you. And that's what he said to me. <laughs> and I said, well, I guess we'll cross that path when we come to it. You know, and fast forward, here I am sitting, looking at my altar with my big Mary Magdalene statue. <laughs> so it's just beautiful, the grace that we don't know what we don't know. So how do you begin? How do you begin to heal this inside of you? without having to travel to Scotland to have the land reveal it to reveal this to you, right? Not everyone can do that. And in my book, Practical Spirituality, the same thing applies. Rule number one, the first thing you got to do is cultivate awareness. You can't change anything you're not aware of needs changing. So you can look at the masculine energies and the feminine energies inside of you. And again, I'll create a worksheet for you with some journaling questions that you can get on my website. But we want to do a self-reflection self to ask and be really honest. Where do I feel overactive or underactive? And again, this can be deeply unconscious. So maybe even just go back and look at your relationship with the men in your life growing up. Men and women. Look at the relationships with the men and women in your life growing up, the relationships with your mom and all the women in your life, and the relationship with your father and all the men in your life. Really write it down. Write down the underlying um, feeling you always have had around men and women. So we want to, you know, examine those relationships and do a body awareness exercise. And like, where do you feel this living inside of you, this energy? Look at your relationships that you have currently with men and women. What are those relationships like? And then we want to work on healing those wounded aspects of ourself. Signs of the wounded masculine include overly controlling, fear of vulnerability, hyper independence, overly aggressive. And so the healing practices of those, of course, are self compassion, such a big one, and creating healthy boundaries, and encouraging safe expression of vulnerability, through talking, through sharing, through having the courage to say what you really need, instead of just having it come out as anger. That's such a typical toxic masculine trait is that it just comes out as explosive anger bullying, right? Like that bullying to get what you want, bullying to have, try to have your needs met. For the wounded feminine, it's overly reliant on others, emotional overwhelm, and avoiding responsibility. And we want to encourage self-soothing practices for feminine healing. Yoga, dance, movement, flow, breath work, sound healing, chanting. Um, learn how to trust your intuition. So important to trust your intuition and to work on empowerment by setting super small achievable goals and celebrating your success. And there's a lot of other ways to do it, but those are two really simple ways that you could start right now, becoming aware and then beginning to do the healing work. And one of the most powerful ways that you can actually dive into beginning to do healing work is simply to ask your higher self your nafsha, as Yeshua called it in the Aramaic language, your soul, your oversoul, which is living and connected to the field, the quantum field, 
and you know, I really am visual, I really visualize my Naksha now as being uh, like the little, uh, like a little um, light that moves up and down in this frequency band that exists already in this quantum realm, right? And it knows what my highest potentiality is. It knows what I came here to do. It knows what I'm capable of. It knows from, if you envision in the highest, in the quantum realms, right, where all potential already exists, where everything that can ever be already exists, it's a, and it's just a matter of selecting it and collapsing it into reality, that I already have pre-selected the highest for me. It already exists in the field. And so it's choosing me. I'm not choosing it. It's a vibrational attraction, magnetic. I'm magnetic. It's the, it's the, I'm the magnet, right? That's pulling and calling forward to me experiences to flow through me and me as me. And this highest aspect of self has already chosen me and it's and it, it's the vibrational match that's calling me that's it's like it's the thing that's pulling me forward and so you can ask your higher self your nafsha to begin to do the work inside of you to heal you to sweep the basement clean as i like to call it to get in there and go into all those dark corners where all those wounds are living that we don't even know of, that we're not conscious of, that are living inside of us vib as vibrational, energetic frequencies, that we want to begin to do the work to have those cleared out. And you give permission, you will, you use your will, your free will to allow the, this vibrational quality of you that exists to begin to do the work, to align you and bring you into coherence with the highest frequencies meant to come and be expressed through you in this lifetime. And know that as you do the work, it will begin to reveal itself. And it can show up first by, by magnifying the chaos and the messes and the dramas and the traumas that are in your life right now that you're creating. And you're creating them perhaps unconsciously, most of the time unconsciously, because we are living out what's happening inside of us. And so we need to really be able to create this ability to look at that and be aware of that from a point of view that's not attached to it, but to just witness it, to bear witness to what you're creating in your life and to call upon the energy of grace to descend upon you to free up again the grief, the judgment, the condemnation, the shame, the blame, the victimization, all of those lower vibrational frequencies that we are living our life from. And when those things come up and they become very apparent and very clear, which they will, your work then is to not go into reaction. Your work is to go into creation. Reaction and creation have the exact same letters. And I've said this a thousand billion times. <laughs> a reactor is a creator who got all mixed up. So you want to step into your powers as a creator, not a reactor. You want to step into your powers of creation, not reaction, to ask, what would I like instead of this? What would be the most optimal healing instead of this? What can I call forward instead of this? And I saw something really beautiful that sums this up so lovely. And it said, stop giving lectures to people who really need a hug. And that goes inside of ourself too, right? Our self-talk. Stop giving lectures when you need a hug. And when somebody outside of you is in rage, they need a hug. And I'm not saying to hug somebody who's going to punch you, but I'm saying like to know that energy, to see it and to witness it, to witness the true nature of it is really where your power lies here. And I could probably go on with this talk for the rest of this day because it's just going to keep going into different levels and go deeper and deeper. But I really want to keep it in this energy of sacred union inside of you. So ask your nafsha for help. Ask your nafsha for guidance. Be aware that everything that becomes clear to your consciousness through the realms of the chaos, the dramas, the pains, what you're creating in your life, that you're able to see it really clearly. And then feel that grace descend upon your heart 
which will release and unravel through the love of forgiveness and acceptance so that you can create something new. It's entirely possible. I guarantee it. I promise it is. If I can do it, anybody can. If Yeshua could do it, anybody can. If Mary Magdalene could do it, anybody can. And I think that's what they came here to demonstrate. Because if one being embodied in this physicality can do it, we all can. And this is very important healing work that needs to happen now in the collective because there's such this rise of divine feminine that I'm like, I don't want to leave behind the men. We can't leave behind the masculine because it's in us. And the masculine can't overcompensate by becoming too feminine because that's not going to be helpful either. We, we, we need both. We need that balance. We need to become and. I'm strong and I'm soft. I have boundaries, which gives me freedom. I have discipline so that I can have flow. I have structure so that I can have creativity. It's coming into that equilibrium inside of ourselves that's going to change the game energetically, not just for you, but for your relationships as well. And I'm witnessing in this in my own life. And believe me, I never thought it was possible. I think it was nine years ago that I gave a friend relationship advice. She was having a difficult time and I gave her unsolicited relationship advice. And she looked at me and she said to me, you don't have what I want, so I'm not going to listen to you. And when she said that to me, bells went off inside of me and it really sent me on this trajectory that got me to this point right now today by someone being really honest with love and so with that I really know that the healing of this world is going to come through us doing this kind of work to heal our own inner wounding our own divine masculine and feminine wounding and to really step into our power, to step into our powers, to step into the fullness of our being. And we are all so much more powerful than we even realize. You can download this worksheet. I'm going to go create it right now at vibology.com forward slash sacred union. Vibology, V-I-B-O-L-O-G-I-E dot com forward slash sacred union. And I encourage you to just begin to do this work and know that as you begin to do this work, the universe says, okay, yes, let's heal this one and know that it's going to happen. Mwah. See you soon. Bye. Mm -hmm.